So I wanted to do a follow up to my earlier post this week about Renaissance Weekend and how truly terrible it was. Um, because it was truly terrible. I think the blog post uh, makes that pretty clear. But there was another piece to that weekend that I think has some enduring value for me and might for you too. And that's that uh, there's a performance component to Renaissance Weekend, or at least there was where anyone who wants to be part of kind of this um, political parody agrees to do some rehearsing and then the last full day's evening dinner has this performance. Um, and that is not something I would ever, ever, ever do. Yes, I'm an actor, but I tend to take myself way too seriously and um, find it very difficult to put myself in circumstances where I feel like I'm performing as me, not as a character. But my highly successful on both coasts attorney high school friend, Andrew, who um, was in theater with me in high school, convinced me that I had to be part of this because he had done it at the past Renaissance weekends he'd been to and Andrew lives to perform. So uh, again, as part of my year of yes, I let him talk me into it, despite having a lot of reservations about it. So um, I can't tell you a lot about what we did, except again, it was very, very political. So Andrew played Joe Biden at one point and saying that's life maybe, <laughs> I think so. And um, I, we opened with Comedy Tonight from Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, but all the lyrics were rewritten by a man whose name I can't remember, a man and his wife who I think were kind of infamous Renaissance Weekend people. And, um, you know, so I went to the first rehearsal and I was already pretty fragile at this point because the rejection of Renaissance Weekend started for me almost instantly. So um, I showed up and I'm doing this kind of parody stuff. I'm singing. I used to be a singer, but not really. Um, certainly not like a solo singer. And, um, you know, it's not going very well for me and I'm pretty squirmy and uncomfortable. But one thing I kind of can do pretty well is I can come off as appearing confident even if I'm not. So I don't think anyone else knew how uncomfortable I was. And I don't really think anyone else at this point had any idea how really terrible Renaissance Weekend was going for me, how really terribly it was going for me. So, okay, we're doing all these rehearsals and I'm not very excited about the performance, but you know, I'm committed to it now and I've got my solos and I've got my characters and it's this like 20 minute skit. So, we get to the final night, and by that point, I'm just, wow, I'm just a mess in my own mind. And, you know, I've cried like 15 times, and I'm just, I've already been told how cute I am, and I've already been propositioned by a federal judge, and I've already had people walking away from me in just abject horror that I'm from North Dakota, surely the grossest place on the planet, apparently. And so we, we have dinner and we get up to perform. And what happens to me is what always happens to me when I perform, which is my very best, truest, most authentic, 
most core self shows up because that is who I am. Yes, I'm trained as an actor, but I was an actor who got training. I wasn't someone who got trained to be an actor. So we finished this thing and actually I loved every second of it and felt powerful and alive and vindicated. And I'm walking off stage and all these people who would have had nothing to do with me up to this point are suddenly interested in me. All of them are saying, wow, you should really think about performing. You really have a great energy. You really have a powerful stage presence. And what I really wanted to say to them and didn't then and won't now because my mother will watch this is bleep you. It, it was so evident how dismissive they were until I presented something that entertained them. It was so I don't, I don't know, I don't really know how to put it into words, but what, what I took from it for me was, A, I survived it, barely, but I did survive it. And, um, you know, sometimes you're gonna, come up against people who just think they know something about you or think they understand who you are based on things that really have nothing to do with who you are. The fact that I live in Fargo, North Dakota, it's just a location. And quite frankly, the fact that I'm from Fargo, North Dakota is a big piece of what makes me the exceptional, extraordinary person that I am. Because I've spent my life being told I can't possibly be from here. So Renaissance Weekend did some things for me, good and bad. Mostly when people meet me from the Midwest, they don't believe I'm from North Dakota because I'm not afraid to express myself and I um, am pretty bold. And so they're surprised and think I must be a transplant. But Renaissance Weekend had the exact opposite response to me. They never waited to find out who I was or what I was like. They made an assumption about me based on what my name card said. So I really, I really have tried since then to give people the benefit of the doubt, to not judge them by their location or their education or their profession or all kinds of things because I know intimately how awful it is to be judged for something pretty inconsequential. Um, it also has made me unbelievably wary of new environments. I, going into Renaissance Weekend, I really did have my dog Lily's approach, which was, oh, of course you want to get to know me. I'm here. Let's go. Lucky you. Um, and that absolutely destroyed that quality in me. I have been to a number of conferences since a number of um, situations where I was an outsider and I go into every single one unbelievably wary, sure that I'm going to be judged, shocked when I'm not, 
um, it's incredible how quickly our agency can be taken from us and how hard it is to get it back. When I go someplace now and introduce myself, I never say where I'm from. And if I'm pushed, I'll say I'm from the Midwest. And if I'm really pushed, then I will say I'm from Fargo. But I, Renaissance Weekend taught me that where I'm from must not have any real value. So I don't, um, I don't start with that anymore. And Renaissance Weekend taught me that um, I'm okay where I am, who I am. I could have maybe done other things with my life, should have maybe done other things with my life. But this is the path that I am on. Some of it chosen, some of it laid out for me. And it, it really at once both narrowed how I saw myself and expanded it. And it's taken a really, really long time to try to get over Renaissance Weekend. And I'm not there yet. And I can't imagine what it would take for me to go back. I can't imagine what kind of personal success I would have to have in my life to feel like I could face that horrifying, shallow, judgmental room of killer sharks. And then I don't know why I would want to, except for my friend Andrew and my three friends from that weekend, my dear, dear friend Ellen, my good friend Allison, my roommate Cecilia, women I have so much regard for, women who have incredible power in their lives, in their careers, in their professions, women who um, just saw past what nobody else was look, willing to look past. So there's a lot of complexity around Renaissance Weekend for me. But at its core, it confirmed for me that I am a performer. And none of those senators or judges or lawyers or CEOs or whatever the hell jobs they had could hold a candle to me in that venue. So you can take your East Coast and you can take your West Coast you can take your Ivy League education. You can shove it as far and as wide and as deep as you want. Because we all have value somewhere. And sometimes it's easy to forget that and often it's easy to be dismissed. But I have it. You have it. And I think our job is to just hold onto it, to remember it for ourselves because a lot of other people are waiting to make you feel like you are less than. And I'm here to tell you, you are not, and neither am I. And I didn't swear in this vlog video, and I'm proud of myself for that because I really, really wanted to. <laughs> so that's my Renaissance weekend story. The good, the bad, the ugly, the weepy, and ultimately 
a kick-ass performer. That's the piece I'm gonna focus on tonight. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. Thanks.